Hello everybody, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time I'm back with some more solo D&D &D with the adventures of Cheval and Garanas, figuring out what's going to happen next. So this video will be a continuation of the adventures of Cheval and Garanas. I will quickly summarize what's happened in the previous videos. Uh, the first video chronologically was when I used Mythic and D&D to just generate a bit of a backstory for Cheval and Garanas, where the two met in the town of Maysprings, and they met in front of this church where they were both summoned separately, and that's where they first kind of met and introduced themselves to each other. And then uh, a man, a priest at the church by the name of Newt, uh, was the one that sent out this request for adventurers' help, and so Newt starts telling Cheval and Garnas about this mysterious, this um, this me mechanical object. It was uh, extraordinarily simple, and it just fell from the sky, hitting in town kind of near the church. And there's all these different groups that want different things with it. Um, what Newt pretty much wants, I imagine, is just to be resolved. So he just needs help figuring out the situation. So uh, he enlisted us to go try to figure out what's going on. So he told us where this object landed. We went there and there was no object. The object was gone. Um, one of the main guards there by the name of Lore K uh, gave us a bit of information about what had happened and pretty much that this object was here. Now it's not. They do have a main suspect in who took it and they think it's this organization called the Old Mechanicals. They believe this because they found a piece of like robe that seems to be the same type of robes that like the old mechanicals wear. So that's kind of the only lead they have. Um, so they, uh, Lord K mentioned that the old mechanicals are kind of based out of a nearby town called King's Forge. So that's where Cheval and Garanas left. And then en route to King's Forge, they stumbled upon Wataru City, which is where the, um, escape the city adventure happened nothing really tied in with the story there but i just kind of wanted to make it you know fit in narratively so um there wasn't you know any old mechanicals there or anything like that but it was just you know everything that happened in the escape the city playthrough happened they both came out alive which is good and then now we're going to continue onwards to king's forge i will quickly note everything i'm using tools and source wise so for my um tabletop simulator here. I'm using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I am, of course, using Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition for the actual game system itself, and I will be using Mythic Game Master Emulator 2nd Edition again for the Game Master Emulator. Um, the only other tools I will be using, I have these two books that I used last time, Table Fables, Table Fables 2 by Madeline Hale. Um, these are great little books, and uh, they have lots of great tables in them. So that's pretty much it. So I have Cheval and Garadas here on the road to King's Forge. Um, I added a new scene to travel to King's Forge. I also bumped up the chaos factor from last time. So we're currently seeing at a chaos factor of five. So let me go ahead and roll a d10 to see if the scene starts out like we planned or if it's altered or if there's an unexpected thing that happens. So with a chaos ranking of five, a two is lower than five. So something does happen since it's even, it's an interrupted scene. So a pretty much a random event is going to happen. And normally you would, uh, there's different ways that you can generate a interrupted scene and like what's interrupted and all that stuff. But I think what I kind of expect to happen, uh, well, not what I expect, but you know what, what, what's going to happen is that I think, because last time we didn't do any combat. I think I made one like, skill check and that was it so i really want to do some combat this time so i'm gonna say that there is some combat encounter that happens that maybe they get like ambushed so i'm gonna use the website donjon i will post a link in the description it has a really nice um, random encounter generator so what i'll maybe do is i'm gonna roll a um i'll, I'll ask mythic is the encounter um Let's see, it's a different difficulty. So easy, medium, hard, or deadly. So maybe I'll just roll a d4 to see what difficulty it is. Like one for easy, two for medium, so on and so forth. So hopefully I don't roll a four. It's a one. Okay, so a pretty easy encounter. Um, I'll just go with the environment grassland because that's kind of... Eh, we'll go more like a forest because that's more where we are. 
And then I'm just gonna click generate a few times and whatever the first result is, that's what I'll use. So we have three tribal warriors. Okay. All right, so yeah, Garanas and Cheval have left Waterloo. They're en route to King's Forge, walking down this path, kind of through a forest. And uh, they get, they get uh, jumped by some tribal warriors. So what I might have both of them do is, we'll say maybe it's a moderate test to not be ambushed. So I'm gonna use my little DC generator that I used last time. So moderate starts out at four, and then I need to roll a D10 to see what they would need to. So a three is a plus one. So an, a 12 perception check is what both of them need. Or at least one of them needs probably to not be surprised because if one of them's not surprised, then I think we'll be fine. So uh, Garanas has, let's see, perception. He has plus five. So hopefully Garanas is pretty perceptive. Uh, a 12. Okay, well that, that already beats it. Let's see. Um, what Cheval gets, because he has a plus two. So he might, whoops, uh, just a plus two to a perception check. Um, not as perceptive. Luckily, Garanas notices them. Um, they do seem hostile, so though they are not surprised, we are going to be entering initiative. All right, so in Foundry, it's pretty simple to do initiative. Just do all that, do all that. I'll roll for each of these guys real fast. And luckily it takes care of all of it, so pretty simple. Um, and Cheval and Garnas should also have all their stuff in here, so that. And then just Garnas. Garnas does have, I imagine, Vigilant Blessing activated, so he would get advantage. Um, 16, and he does have minus one, I forgot about that. Okay, um, so we are in initiative, starting with Cheval. So Cheval, being a barbarian, is of course going to do the classic barbarian move of, as the very first thing he's going to do as, let's see, it's a bonus action, right? They're gonna rage. So Cheval's going to rage, and then he can move up to 30 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, that's exactly enough, that's cool. Um, so he's raged, he moved, still has his action, so then what I think I will do is just attack. Cheval is carrying a great axe, so he's going to attack with that. I think I will go ahead and recklessly attack along with taking, uh, I took Great Weapon Master as a feat. So I will use Great Weapon Master as well. So I will have a minus five to hit. Then if I do hit, it'll be plus 10 damage. So um, let's go ahead and do that real fast. So Cheval, um, Go into here, inventory, their great axe. Roll with that, roll to attack, and rolling with advantage, so a plus, yeah, they should have a plus five total, but then with this, it's actually a, a minus five. So you know what, it's just a straight d20 roll, but he gets two d20s to try to hit this guy. Um, yeah, no modifiers, because normally he has plus five, but great weapon minus, master would be minus five, so, 2d20s is what he gets to roll. A 19, okay. Uh, the Tribal Warrior's AC is only 12, so that will definitely hit with his Great Axe. So he's gonna be doing lots of damage. He's gonna be doing a d12, plus um, he gets extra damage from Raging, I believe. Okay, so he normally gets plus three just from the Great Axe. Then Rage damage, he gets an extra plus two, so that's plus five total along with the d12, but then, since I used Great Weapon Master, I got an extra 10, so that's plus 15 total. And then, since I'm also a Path of the Zealot, after I do this, I get to roll a d6 plus 1 Radiant damage. So, this is gonna hurt. Okay, I rolled pretty low. And then we roll, um, I can just type it in here, d6 plus 1 Radiant damage. So, oh my goodness, so 25 damage total. Uh, they only had 11 hit points, so minus 25. Cheval just takes him out one swing of this great axe. He's mad, he runs up, he recklessly attacks, he doesn't care. He's he's just going for the kill and he gets it in one swing. But also since he attacked recklessly, now all attacks against him will have advantage. But that's just, uh, that's just how it goes. So then Garanas' turn. Um... 
I was going to use Spirit Weapon, because that's usually one of my favorite spells as a cleric. I think instead I will cast Bless. Little, uh, it's not a, well, you know what? No, I'm, I was going to cast Bless. You know, we'll, we'll go with Spirit Weapon instead. So let me create a little token for Spirit Weapon. And I'll just place it back there. Yeah, so I just placed my Spirit Weapon back there. I couldn't find a great token for it. It's not that important. It's just a spirit weapon. So it's going to look like a, a big old mace. So uh, that was a second level spell slot for Cheval. Or sorry, for Garnas. Um, and then I believe when I cast it, I get to make an attack. So I would go ahead and attack with this. I make a melee spell attack. So I basically add my, add my spell attack bonus, which is plus five. I'm gonna just try to hit the guy, uh, I guess closest to Cheval. So this one, um, D20 plus five, like how can I miss with that? <laughs> we'll see. Okay, a 16 definitely hits. So then it does a D8 plus three damage. So that could kill him if I roll max damage. Did not roll max damage. Okay, so minus six HP. They are looking pretty low on health. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's stuff I could do with my bonus action as Garnas, but I will uh, choose not to for now. So that is it for his turn. The first warrior is up. Which one is this? Oh, it's the dead one. Okay, so dead one would go, but they're they're dead. Um, so then we have this one up top. So it's going to go five ten and uh, try to swing at Cheval. So their main weapon is their spear. And I don't think pack tactics, oh, it would come into play because they have advantage, well, they would already have advantage, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll go ahead and click that, down here, attack. They have advantage because of pack tactics and because he recklessly attacked. A 12, wow. Uh, 12 does not hit, so that's unfortunate. Um, that's gonna be it for the First tribal warrior's turn, I guess. And the second one is going to go 5, 10, 15 up to Cheval and also try to attack. Uh, once again, they will have advantage because of pack tactics and because of great weapon or recklessly attacking. Um, ooh, another 12. Wow. <clears throat> Misses again. That's unfortunate for them because it's back to Cheval's turn. Yeah, Cheval is gonna just attack uh, probably the guy that hasn't been hit yet. And once again, he's gonna pretty much do the same exact thing. So he's going to uh, to roll to hit. He will be just rolling two d20s, not adding anything because I'm gonna do great weapon fighting and recklessly attacking. So let's just see what I get. Double 15s, which hits. So then I roll the d12. What was it? Plus 15 because it's normally plus three plus two from rage and then plus 10 from uh great great weapon master so see how this goes it might just kill him right i mean i would i has to kill him right off the bat um 18 damage just slaughters this other tribal warrior as it comes up and attacks cheval and then that's it for cheval's turn back to garnas garnas i believe as a bonus action can move his spirit weapon yeah as a bonus action, he can move his spirit weapon. So he'll move it over here. And then as an action, go ahead and attempt to attack. So D20, and what did I say? It was plus five because of spell attack bonus. I believe that's how that works. A 12. A 12 barely hits, but it hits. And then it does, what was it? D8 plus three damage. So hopefully they can finish him off. Seven damage will be enough as... Uh, Garanas summons his spirit weapon, moves it over, hits the guy, and takes out the final tribal warrior. And with that, we're out of initiative. All right, I'm not gonna really worry about looting them. I mean, they probably, they each have like a spear on them and like hide armor. Um, I, don't, I don't know, it's probably not the best condition. And yeah, they probably don't have much gold because they're just tribal warriors. So I'm not really gonna, I'm not too concerned about looting. And instead, I guess we will continue onwards to King's Forge and um, hopefully finish the rest of the journey without being attacked again. So, yeah, I'm going to say that's probably a new scene. So I'll go ahead and write that up.
Okay, so new scene. I'm going to just say that we were probably most of the way there because it probably wasn't terribly far away and we already went through Wataru City. So take it down these tribal warriors. We probably weren't far away from King's Forge. And I did uh, generate some details using uh, table fables for King's Forge. So I'll quickly go over that. That King's Forge is a town of a population roughly 12,000 people. So a lot of people. Uh, quality of life is great. The government is uh, representative based. Um, primary export is iron. The architecture, they have like generally tall, kind of blocky structures with flat roofs. Um, the town center is a cobbled square. Uh, the town's history is they have a history of alien encounters and notabilities is that the town is superstitious. So I think those two go pretty well together that there was alien encounters and now the town's pretty superstitious. So yeah. Okay, so writing up a new scene as we arrive in King's Forge to track down the old mechanicals. That's kind of the main thing we're doing right now, seeing if they're even involved with this, if it is their robe. I mean, it seems like it's their robe, so was it actually someone wearing them? Was it someone framing them? Who knows? Uh, maybe they have a good reason for stealing this thing. Maybe they didn't steal the thing. Maybe they were paid to steal the thing. Who knows? So we arrive in King's Forge. Um, new scene. I'm going to say that the chaos factor did go up from last scene. So we're sitting at a chaos ranking of six. So let me go ahead and roll to see if anything is um, altered or interrupted. And we're getting interrupted again right as we get in the city. Um, this time I will roll for what happens. Okay, so let's first roll a D100 to see what the focus of this random event is. And what is that? 94 means it is something related to the current context. Okay, so we're just arriving in King's Forge, so something to do with King's Forge. Um, all right, let's figure out what this event is. So what I think I'll do is just roll uh, twice on the actions table and see what's what's going on, you know? See what kind of random event we are encountering. So we got a 92 and a 4. So that would either be, let's see, a 92 is transform and four is agree or on the other table, trial and animal. OK, so I kind of like the two words of transform and animal because those work pretty well together. And what I think how that could work is we get in the city and we're starting to look around and maybe at some point we're like a like an alley cat or something uh, walks up to us. And then as it like, approaches, it suddenly transforms into somebody, it transforms into a person. Um, I kind of like the idea that it transforms into like, uh, I mean, I don't know what like race or anything, but it's maybe some like city official, um, like a guard or something or like a, like a spy. And they, they maybe see some uh, people entering the city. So they, uh, they like untransform and boom, there's a person standing in front of us. Um, let's get a name. Whoa, 100, okay. Zenith is the person's name. And they transform out from becoming an alley cat. And we'll say that they're probably, I don't know, we'll just say like they're an elf, uh, an elven woman that we see. And uh, she says, um, well, let's maybe, hold on. There's a, uh, there's a character personality table. So let's just maybe roll two of these uh, to get a personality for Zenith here. And we have... 45 and 16. So Zenith is, um, gr they have a personality trait of greed and they also have a personality trait of brave. Okay, so they're brave and greedy. Um, so maybe they like, they, they stop us. Uh, maybe they're like not supposed to really like come out of being a cat, you know, being in disguise, but they're like, they don't care. They just want to like confront us. Maybe, you know, we have like nice armor on. So like we look not wealthy, but like, you know, we're not we got some gold to 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 just throw around, not just throw around, but we just have gold on hand. Um, and yeah, well, I kind of like the idea then this makes more sense that, that maybe they're not an official, that they're just some person that I don't want to see. Are they like robbing us? Maybe they're robbing us. <laughs> this is just some rando that's trying to rob us. That would be pretty crazy. Um, because one of the things is greed. So let me, let me, you know, let me ask Mythic. I haven't asked a single question to the fate chart. Um, is Zenith, are they like a guard with the city? That's going to be my question. I'm going to go with unlikely. Let's see what 
they say. So with a chaos ranking of six, we rolled what, 12? Um, so they are a guard. Okay. Or at least some city official. Um, so they pop out of their form. They're, I imagine they're mostly just questioning why we're here. They're like, well, what brings you to, uh, to King's Forge? And uh, Garnas and Cheval tell her about that we're looking for the old mechanicals. After mentioning the old mechanicals, I'm kind of curious to know if Zenith knows anything about them. Um, I don't know. I'm a, well, you know what? If they're kind of based out of here, I'm going to go likely. So with a chaos ranking of six, does Zenith know anything about the old mechanicals? Uh, likely. Okay. Oh, no, no, I was looking at the wrong. Um, no, they they don't know anything about the old mechanicals. I'm like, okay, uh, could you possibly point us towards somebody that, that would know about the old mechanicals? I kind of just tell them that they're like this group that has caused, tr not trouble, but they're, uh, they need, we're here to question them about an incident that happened in May Springs. Um, is there any, I don't know, like local traders or other officials that might know of the old mechanicals? So let me ask Zenith, is there people you know that would possibly be able to point us in the direction of the old mechanicals. Um, I'm going to think that's very likely because if there's some sort of city official or whatever, they should know people. Um, so what I say, very likely chaos ranking of six. No, they said no again. So they, they don't, they don't know anything. Um, okay. Well, this person's useless. Um, are they, what was their purpose then? Why did they like, transform out? Were they just curious well, what we were up to? Um, I guess so. Sure. So they were just kind of wondering like what we were doing here. Maybe just being a bit snoopy. Um, yeah, sure. That sounds good. So they, they claim they don't know anything about the old mechanicals. They seem to be some sort of guard, just kind of keeping tabs on people. So, okay. Um, so let's go around and maybe try to find like some other official uh, guard or whatever. Some, so, some sort of guards around here. Um, so let's walk around maybe towards the town center because there's like a cobbled square. As you can see here, this this uh, battle map I have going on looks a lot like uh, the last one. And that's just because, I don't know, I'm not too concerned about the battle maps. It's mainly there just for like, um, for combat. So uh, we head towards the town square and I guess we start just kind of asking around to some of the guards we see there. And do any of the guards um, know about the old mechanicals? I'm gonna have to say that's probably, like if there's multiple guards, it's probably gonna be very likely. So let's see, if we find somebody that knows about the old mechanicals. Um, <laughs> these are all, these have all been just one off. Like the last question was just like two off. This is just one off, but no. No guards know about the old mechanicals. So that seems like something's going on here. Either the, all the guards are a part of the old mechanicals and they're just like lying to us. Or maybe they don't actually know. Maybe I got some bad information from Mace Wings, or maybe they're just like super secretive here. I don't know. Um, let me maybe roll an insight check on this guard. Uh, we'll say it's probably going to be a hard insight check when we roll this to just get a bit of a modifier. A two, so I need to pass a 16 insight check, which, let me pull up my thing here. Uh, Garanas's insight is plus five, so I just need an 11 or higher. Okay, okay, great. Um, so Garanas is able, like, the, we'll just say, like, the most recent guard we've been asking, um, is able to kind of tell if they're telling the truth or not. So then my question is to Mythic, are they actually telling the truth? Because Garanas is going to be able to tell, are they lying to us? But that's, that's going to be my question. Is, is this guard lying to us about not knowing the old mechanicals? Um, I'm going to go very likely because it seems weird that none of these guards know anything. And that supposedly they're kind of based out of King's Forge, so I'm starting to get suspicious that they're in on it. Maybe we'll just go likely, because I really don't know. Maybe these guards, maybe they're just super secretive here. I, I don't know. So we'll go with, um, is this guard actually lying? We'll go with likely. 
And what is that? That is a 65. So likely 65. Yes. Okay. Garnas is able to pick up a bit of a bit of a scent that uh, this guard, the most recent guard we're talking to, doesn't seem like they're telling the whole truth that they don't know anything about the old mechanicals. Um, I might have um, Cheval. Let's see. Hold on. So then I'm going to have Cheval try to call out this guard and be like, listen, like I, I I'm, I'm an old dwarf been around a while, I can tell when people are lying, and I can tell you're lying to me right now. now you tell me what you know, or... I don't know what. <laughs> he just says, or. Um, so insert some vague threat there. I'm basically going to have him do a, uh, a, a persuasion. I'm not gonna, maybe I'm not gonna threaten him. I'm just gonna try to persuade, like, listen. I can tell you know something. We know that they're based out of here. We're just trying to solve this incident in May Springs. Like, what... Do you, where, what do you know about the old mechanicals? Do you actually know anything? You should tell us. And so I have a, I don't even know what I have. This is probably gonna be a hard test again. So maybe I, let me, whatever I rolled, oh, that's a good roll. I'm not gonna do that roll because I need to actually roll the DC first. Uh, we'll see, this is probably another hard test. Um, so with a four, that's gonna be a 17 that I need. And then now I'm gonna roll my persuasion, which I have plus three to. So I need to get a 17. That's okay. Yeah, I rolled a 17 plus a three. That's a 20. So yes. Um, what, let me get a name for this guard that we're talking to right now. Um, we'll just say it's probably some like male human. So 54, their name. No way. I, <laughs> we're getting a different name. I just rolled lore K. Like out of all the names, I've only rolled like two names on these tables. And I'm already getting the same ones. Ark. Okay. Ark is their name. Um, so Ark's like, okay. Like, I'll tell you what I know. Um, so what, what does Ark know about the old mechanicals? That's a great question. Um, does, let me, let me start with this. Do they know where we can find the old mechanicals? I'm going to go with likely. That seems pretty likely if they know what, um, I'm going to go with, yeah, likely if they know where to find them. Uh, 43, yes, they know where to find them. Great. Um, I'm going to ask this guard then, are you like a part of the old mechanicals or like associated with them? Are you like allies with them is kind of my question for you. Um, I'm going to go with like uh, maybe 50-50 because I don't know. It seems like a 50-50 type of question. Uh, 19 is a yes. So they are allied or a part of the old mechanicals. So Okay. Um, let me ask, then I will just straight up ask, like, are you, I guess I asked allied. Maybe I meant, like, are you a member of the old mechanicals? Um, which I still think would have been, like, maybe 50-50. So they, maybe they wouldn't tell us. Yeah, maybe they just are saying they're an allied, uh, with the old mechanicals. So I'm like, okay. So you're friends with them. So you know where we can find them. And... And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really want to ask them. I think that's pretty much it. If they know where we can find them, guards are apparently allied with them, which kind of checks out that all the guards have just been, like, giving us a cold shoulder. Um, okay. Well, then we're just going to uh, try to go find them, I guess, and see what they know. Um, I kind of like this place. is called King's Forge, that maybe there's, like, some, um, like, workshop like maybe abandoned workshop that they meet at i kind of like that because especially if they're the old mechanicals um it makes sense that there's like some workshop or whatever so maybe he just says that there's like oh at the, on like this street or whatever there's this old workshop that they normally meet at and i don't know maybe at like, like a certain time most days and so like we'll say like in the evenings maybe so Cheval and Garnas, thank uh, Ark for cooperating finally, and we head to the workshop, and maybe we don't head directly there, maybe we kind of go to the area to start scoping it out, seeing like people that go into or out of it, and um, start investigating the old mechanicals a little bit more. I think that's where I'm going to wrap up here today. I wanted to do a little bit more, but I also wanted to keep this video pretty short, and I wanted to also get some combat in, which we did, so... 
I'm cool wrapping it up here and we'll have to figure out what is in that old workshop, who's all part of the old mechanicals, what they're up to. Did they even take the device? Are they being framed? Are they being paid? Are, are the, oh, is the whole town in on this? Or is the whole town just the old mechanicals? Is it just the guards? I have so many questions that need some answers and we'll find out next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I'll see you.